Welcome back, Sergei fans, to Nanwa is a Don and the Spectacular Tournament Recap. I am your host, Dominic Still, and we have round four of the Swiss. The last round, unless there's tiebreakers. And there's always tiebreakers. So the last non-tiebreaker round, and we're going to be watching the match between FFC Steel Blue and the Green Squig versus Team XCOM, spraying Droppy and Zenfer. And that'll be on Talus, and that'll be right now. Let's go watch it. So we have Zenfer building up the Shieldbot Factory. We have Sprang not building a factory at all. They have no plans whatsoever to build factories, apparently. And Droppy going for gunships on top of a giant hill. Which looks kind of cool. I haven't really seen Talus much, so I'm not super familiar with how it's laid out. But yeah, that that's kind of a cool little look there with the hill. Other side of the map, Steel Blue going for Cloakbot Factory. We have FFC over to the very south of the map going for Spiders. And Green Squig taking the top with Shields. Kind of spread out, almost playing like multiple different... 1v1s in a way. Like this map, unlike the last one we saw, Forgotten Crossing, Talus is huge and very height, very high. There's a lot of height variation here. I'm not used to seeing that in 0k maps. It's really cool. It's just kind of, it's kind of novel. Steel Blue setting up that for the radar too. Very nice choice there. Make sure they have their scouting on the hills because why not? But at the same time, yeah, the gunship factory on the hill makes it a little bit harder to attack. Not that it's stopping FFC from at least scouting out what's going on. In the same time, Flea's coming in here from Sprang. Should be able to see a little what's going on, see if there's anything being built up over in this hill section, which... Not really. Some pick, it's a bunch of wind generators because they're like 2.4. Oh yeah, wow. Actually, what is the range of wind generators on this map anyways? Well, okay. 0.1, yeah, it's per complete range. 0.1 to 2.5, depending on where you are on the map. Well, a lot of the main base section is about 0.1, so it's actually really efficient. Build a bunch of metal extractors, or wind generators right here, and it'd be, it'd be really nice to have. Oops, there we go. Build a bunch of wind generators. That's your entire power infrastructure dealt with until your opponents decide to attack you. At least there, where, where we see a green squig that's not as viable. But yeah, this, this is really, this is neat. I have not seen this map before, and I really like the way it's laid out. Or at least, I like how it looks. I can't speak to how it plays. Looks like there are some decent ranges of choke points, though. Oof, Flea coming in here, getting rid of Metal Extractor. Droppy might be able to stop the second Metal Extractor from dying, but won't be able to stop the first. I also like that FFC is making sure not to keep their Fleas too close to the Metal Extractors. Or at least they had enough at that point, which is... That's always how you play Fleas. Always, always, always make sure those Fleas do not get close to the Metal Extractors, because the Death Explosion will kill them. As it stands, though, Team XCOM, they are expanding quite rapidly, even though they only have this one corner of the map. So they've, they've potentially ceded the northwest side of the map to Eastern Team. And Green Squig is going for it. Slowly but surely, mostly going for the really valuable Metal Extractors, which that's the thing you want to go for. Very good choice. But yeah, this is... This is a situation where you definitely want to get those Metal Extractors, definitely want to get the northwest terrain, or the territory, rather. And that if that's done properly then that's going to be a huge boon for the Eastern team. If they set that up, they can defend it. If they can get overdrive across it, that'll be basically 100 plus metal per second. On top of all the energy, just the fact that wind generators are so efficient on this map, which Steel Blue is taking full advantage of. That is going to be a really nice combination of things. Like Overall, Green Squig is setting up for potentially a very strong economy for their team. Team XCOM, yeah, they're well defended, and they've got a reasonably strong position to work with right now, but they're going to fall behind economically shortly. Like, if they don't turn this into an assault in the next two or three minutes, I don't know what they have going for them. Just because of the fact that FSC did start in the south side of the river, that's the main thing. If FSC gets wiped out, that's, that's, the other, that's the opposite situation. If FSC gets destroyed, then at that point, Team XCOM and the Eastern Team are going to be basically even. They'll be split by the river... And that'll work out. As it stands, Zenfer trying to get rid of Steel Blue's base, but FFC is not going down. Most of it looks like Zenfer is just waiting. But, as being said, not a whole lot from Zenfer going inside here. Or, sorry, is that, yeah, Zenfer is waiting. Zenfer and Sprang both just biding their time. 
waiting to see what FFC will do. But it looks like FFC just focused on getting a bunch of static defenses just to push back, just basically create a solid front line, not worrying too much about assaulting the base of Team XCOM, just making sure that the south side of the river, the southeast part of the river, is being held onto by FFC. Although that being said, Flea Assault coming into the bandit should be able to get rid of it. I don't see it dealing much damage, but it's able to get rid of a handful of, of wind generator, not wind generators, pickets. Get rid of a handful of pickets, get rid of a lotus. So, oh, okay, opens up the room for the red back, breaking through the front lines here. FFC losing a lot of their fleas, but it's not like the fleas were exactly the main defensive asset on FFC's front line. And able to save the red back too. Nicely done. I wasn't sure that was going to work out, but there you go. So FFC with a couple of recklessness on top of that red back, having gotten rid of most of the front line forces. This is working out all right, but as we can see right now, Zenfer coming in with a little sneaky assault with the shield butts. Got a bunch of bandits over to the south side of the map that will be able to sneak in. Actually, will they be able to sneak in? Good question. I don't know if they can actually path through here. And no, they can't. That's a much taller hill than it looked at first. So no, they, they are not going to be able to just, just get away with that. I mean, they can try. It's not going to amount to much, but hell, they can try. If there was terraforming going on, they'd, they'd have a chance. I don't know if Zenfer realizes that there is no way those bandits are going to get through. Like, just how tall that hill is. But it's tall enough that it basically just gives away Zemper's entire plan without actually accomplishing anything off that plan. And the fleas are able to come in here and just wipe out everything out, too, because the fleas can go over that hill. I don't... I think I can get rid of the bandits. Are they seriously going to get rid of the bandits? I got rid of a handful. Well, by a handful, I mean one. Very, very small handful. But at the same time, Green Squig and Steel Blue coming in all in the center with a lot of glaives. The Glaives, Bandits, Outlaws. Good raiding force coming in here to try to help deal with everything that Team XCOM has built up. And honestly, I don't see much Team XCOM has that actually deals with this. Zenfer has been the one primarily building the offensive assets, and that's been Bandits, and those are all on the south side of the map because of the failed attempt to go down a hill that was way, way taller than it looks. Like, this, this map is very vertical. Which means I'm actually kind of surprised we didn't see more spider play being done. Actually, do, do we have spiders over here? No, we don't. Oh, we do now. Never mind. Sprang, Sprang does have spiders. What am I saying? Sprang just didn't go for a whole lot of offense with their spiders. Despite how useful that would be. But that's fine. I mean, at this point, Zen for going in for an attack with the bandits coming in the center of the map. And not a whole lot's going to stop them. Green Squig and Steel Blue already pushed in. Green Squig pulling back a little bit. They are going to set up some defenses to make sure the bandits cannot get in or just wreak havoc. Steel Blue, on the other hand, going with the Glaives. Nice positioning against the Venoms, making sure they aren't all stunned out at the same time. That's exactly what you want to do with Glaives. It's not going to be quite enough. Unfortunately, the Lotus being there does provide enough support. The, that That's it. Like, there's no way those Venoms are going to die. But still, very nice micro by those Glaives. Now, Steel Blue set up to maybe deal with something here. I don't know. The, the Reaver's going to try. It's going to be able to get a few kills. As the Ronin, actually, just the sheer number of bandits there. They're just firing in the crowd and get something. But these are too many bandits to really get rid of this force. Like, Steel Blue's force is going to go down without support. There is some support coming in here, however, from Green Squig, and that is going to help get rid of the bandits. That is all the bandits coming. They're, they're gone. Zenfer's bandits, or first wave of bandits is gone. Second wave of bandits trying to go to the south side of the map, getting through a bunch of Glaze and Ronin. They're going to have a bit more success, but not by much, and even then, there's the there's a Reaver coming in here, and that Reaver's going to stop them. At the same time, counterattack coming in here from his Green Squig, or rather from... No, it's Green Squig. Yeah, Green Squig is still blue. This counterattack should be able to get rid of Sprang's commander, and that will be enough. At the same time, FFC over the south side of the map with a boatload of fleas just wiping everything out. That Stinger's not going to be able to do much damage just because the fleas are so numerous and the Stinger does not fire frequently enough. Opening everything up for the Rexes to come in here. And the, oh, that death explosion. It's always the death explosion. FFC, I thought you knew the death explosion. I love FFC's wa watching right now. I'm sure they know about the death explosion. I mean, it's just a fight move, really. That's what it comes down to. If you fight move, then the units will be far enough away. Or the fleas will be at max range. And usually that's away from Death Explosion. Although, to be fair, I'm not sure that the Stinger's Death Explosion is small enough that it can be dodged by fleas. I'd have to double check, and I don't see any Stingers around here. So I'm not... I can't say. Oh, hey, there's a Stinger. Uh, okay, yeah, the Death, ex the death Explosion is pretty wide. I, I think fleas might be able to outrange it, but it would be close. Regardless of that, though, East Team, currently looking at 100 plus metal per second. 
I mean, Droppy being sneaky with the Wasps, going to the north side of the map, and taking the northwest. So, trying to, trying to play what FFC did, because the Green Squig doesn't have a whole lot defending this, and didn't really go for it. I mean, E's team is still ahead economically, but it's not as far ahead as I was talking about earlier. The main reason is mainly just that FFC is taking the entire south side of the map. And it's essentially split east-west, but with Sprang pulling up forward, FFC getting nice little foothold further inside of Zenfer's base. At the same time, Zenfer with a really nice bandit assault here on the north side of the map, and nothing really stopping them. The forces are coming in. Enough thugs and outlaws to eliminate the bandits eventually, but not before essentially everything that Green Squig built over, especially by the plus 4.6 metal extractor, is completely wiped out. Oh, that was the Black Dawn, sorry. But it wasn't the Stinger Death Explosion. It was the Black Dawn that fired. I don't know how I didn't notice that. Thank you, Fine Step. Good call. And Commander down too, so eesh, Zenford losing their commander. Gaining the north side of the map, kind of. Losing their commander in the process. As FFC is just completely wiping everything out. I mean, okay, the Fleas still go down to the, de the Death Explosion. They could still be fight moved and not go down to the Death Explosion. But, as it stands, that still works out reasonably well. I mean, FFC is still in a very strong position. And they still have enough Fleas. They don't really need to worry about losing Fleas to Death Explosions, because there's another, what, 26 Fleas right here? They can just waltz right in. Won't be a big deal. At the same time, north side of the map, how many... Sheesh, you don't... I, I, okay. I'm not, used to, I'm not used to seeing armies this big, multiple armies that are 40, 50 units strong. I mean, I guess 3v3 is different, so yeah, you do get that a fair bit. What you also got, however, is a lot of Ronin getting rid of spider bots that aren't really equipped to deal with them. Especially the Venoms. So, the river's the one thing that XCOM kind of has. I mean, they're, they're managing to take the Northwest somewhat. But Green Squig putting a stop to that with a size. A bunch of naked expansions. Nothing's going to be able to defend this. I mean, Drop be able to get some money off of it at first, but ultimately not much. Green Squig wiping everything out. Do they have any convicts? Please don't we have convicts. Ah, no, there's no convicts along with this ride. That kind of sucks. I can't actually drag select to find them. And priority wouldn't catch them. But yeah, that, that's kind of unfortunate because if they had the convicts with them, they could just build up metal extractors as they go with some defenses and reclaim a bunch of this stuff as well. Still, Droppy lost everything built up over the north side of the map. Still kind of contained, and FFC, nothing is really stopping them either. We're, we're seeing some attempts to rack tears to slow down some of the heavier units, but it's not really enough. And FFC also going for Air Factory, just, just to add insult to injury. Throwing in the Phoenixes and burning out most of the frontline forces coming in from Zenfer. And that's it. That's all they need. Between all the contains and the fact that the northwest side was destroyed and the fact that the frontline forces just really can't get in, XCOM throws in the towel. So that, I believe... The FFC and Green Squig, that, I think, puts them at 2-2. Two and two. If you go back to the results... Yeah, come on. Yeah, we'll see that... FFC, okay, so FFC still blue Green Squig. They are 2-2. Two and two. Catastrophe, Top Cat, Sigaro are 3-1. Three and, three and one. Okay, so Fernando Menno Isaac will advance. Catastrophe, Top Cat, Sigaro, 3-1. As are... Dying from Fireplug, Izzeride. So they'd also advance. Unless there's another 3-1, which I don't think there is. That's 2-2. Two and two. That's 2-2. Two and two. Not participating Team Russia is also 2-2. Two and two. As, I believe, is Tri No, Trevor Hoko, Hoko, Hoko and Wesley don't advance. They're not quite there. And, ooh, Venom 69 King... Or Venom Kingstad Astron going 0-4. Kind of surprising, actually. So there will be a tiebreaker match... Looking at how that goes. Actually, we can see the standings right here. It'll, it'll mess up the look of it, but... Yeah, here are the standings. So, Mano Eyes... Oh, Team Lobster. I was right. It is Lobster. Team Lobster 4-0. Team Pluck Power. Diamond Fire Fireplug Easy Ride 3-1. Along with Team Mumble Clan. 3-1. Steel Blue Green... Or, Killers. FFC Steel Blue Green Squig against Team Russia. 2-2. Two and two. That looks to be the tiebreaker match. And that will indeed be the next match we cover. 400 Man and Isaac versus... Oh, wait, what? what, what? 400 Man and Isaac for strength, Droppy Zenfer. Oh, that must have been a placement thing. 
Okay, well, I'm not going to do that one. I'm going to do the one that's actually... The one that's... That's for getting in in the first place. I think that one being played is just for... Wait, what the heck? Sorry, the replays don't line up. FSC Silo Green Squig should be the one I... I look at. Because they're the one trying to get in, right? Like... Where the heck is that match? Okay, I don't... I can't find a replay for it. That's... I don't know what's happening here. Why can I not find a replay? For this stuff. Okay, I'm not sure what's happening then, but I think... I think we just have to move on to the bracket stage, because I can't find the replay for the... The tiebreaker. Oh, Team Russia just straight up didn't show up. Oh, okay. How did they win then? There are matches that are listed as them having won. That doesn't make any sense. Like, I don't I don't understand how they could have won matches if they weren't here. Okay. Sure. Well, anyway, thanks, FFC. That explains a lot, so I'm not really sure what happened. I'll just move on to the bracket stage, and we'll get to that shortly. I'll have to do a bit of jiggering of the actual stream, so stay tuned. We'll be up with the brackets in a couple minutes.